Hello, students, and welcome to week six. We're moving right along, and I appreciate your dedication and participation in our course. I pray that it continues to be a blessing to you. As we move from week five into week six, I want to let you know that I've been able to scan almost every one of the uh, submitted week five papers, and I will begin reading more closely and grading and posting those grades this week today in um, specific, and we'll have those all done by this coming Friday. I'll probably be done with most of them before Friday, but I have two other sections of another course that I have papers in as well, so I'm managing several grading projects this week, but I do intend to have it back to you in a timely manner, so be watching for that, and thank you for that good work. Now, as we move into week six, our theme this week is life, health, and bodily integrity. Now, this is going to sound a little similar in that we're going to be working with the key terms and concepts of murder and killing, and those came up earlier, didn't they, when we were working through the issue of the um, uh, group dialogue assignment and the British case concerning perfect and imperfect duties and the order to abort a child, and we were looking at the uh, moral implications of the command, you shall not murder. But we're going to go a little deeper and look at that more specifically this week as we look at the principles that would govern our understanding of murder and killing. I'm going to make some distinctions there again. We're going to look specifically at abortion once more, but also physician-assisted suicide. So those are going to be our uh, key terms and concepts for this week, and we'll be using these uh, course readings to help us do so. Philip Riken, our main text from Written in Stone, Chapter 9, Live and Let Live, where he's going to be looking at the moral and spiritual implications, both ancient and contemporary, in the command, You Shall Not Murder. We're reading from hopefully what's becoming a favorite ancient philosopher and theologian, Thomas Aquinas, from his a massive work, Summa Theologica, and this time a concise translation from section two, part two, question 64, in which he's starting to differentiate between the killing of human beings and living things such as plants. Interesting take that he's going to provide there, so I want us to read that. We're going to read from um, a short uh, speech that was delivered by now the late U.S. Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia, titled Scalia Speaks, when he was asked to speak some years ago at the commemoration of the annual Holocaust observance. A uh, very powerful speech about the sanctity of life. I want you to read that. We're also going to read this week from Mother Teresa, or at least those lawyers writing in her behalf, an amicus brief that was submitted to SCOTUS, the U.S. Supreme Court of the United States, way back in 1994, that is going to argue on the basis of the moral imperative that the founding fathers saw concerning the right to uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and the protection, therefore, of life, both for the preborn, specifically she's talking about, and then the implications are for those at the other end of the spectrum of life, and that's looking at those that would be considering taking their own lives or having them ended through physician-assisted means. So it's going to be an interesting take that we're going to read there. We're going to read from a from philosopher Immanuel Kant, a 20, late 19th, 20th century philosopher in his work, Metaphysics of Morals, talking about the moral obligation that we have to ourselves to protect our own lives, and therefore looking at this idea of taking one's own life by, by suicide. And then finally this week, we're reading from Gerard Monday, a piece called Freedom, Choice, and Physician-Assisted Suicide, looking at the moral implications involved in that. Uh, an important article. I'm also going to be introducing Wednesday in class a couple of more recent uh, newsmaking experiences, one in central Ohio, Columbus, with a physician who was sued 
and um, ultimately uh, exonerated. The suit was uh, defeated. He prevailed, um, in which it was argued that because of his work to minimize pain and suffering and to honor the wishes of patients, he was administering uh, medications that would hasten the end of life. I'm going to read and talk through that one. And then also an even more recent case that developed in Canada along a similar lines and some rulings that they made, uh, because these are all important, relevant, moral issues. So that's where we're going this week. It's going to lead to our next readings quiz due by this coming Sunday. That's going to cover weeks five readings and weeks six readings together, like we typically do. And of course, we'll be having our class session together on Wednesday evening. So there we go. Uh, we're rounding the bend and are on the back stretch in our class, the beginning here of week six. And I'm nearby if needed, praying for you daily, and look forward to our time together on Wednesday. Let's have a great week six together. God bless.